Matthew chapter 13, an appetite for God. Matthew uh, 13, an appetite for God. Praise the Lord. You know, after church today, and we had a wonderful service this morning, I really felt the power, the anointing, and the presence of God in the ministering of this two-part series about how to be led, or what it means to be led by the Holy Spirit. Afterwards, and we were finished with our meeting, our children's uh, ministry meeting, VBS, and uh, my lovely wife said, uh, I'm hungry. Where do you want to go eat? Amen. <laughs> uh, now, this isn't a bad thing. She's hungry. That's a good thing. Amen. And, uh, but you know what? She has an appetite. And uh, uh, we all have an appetite, don't we? We have an appetite. But you know what? We have an appetite for Fred's ice cream. I, yes, sir, I sure do. I have an appetite for a Wendy's hamburger. I have an appetite for El Campesinos. Anybody like El Campesinos? Oh, yeah. Uh, anybody uh, like uh, uh, the remnant? Everybody likes the remnant. That's right. Got an appetite. I get lunches there a lot lately, amen, that uh, protein pack or whatever it is, and uh, the cheese and the meats and things like that, and they make an awesome iced coffee. I tell you, vanilla, it's the tops. It is very, very good, and uh, I, I, we have an appetite for those good things. Well, I want you to have an appetite for the good things of God. I want you to have an appetite for the Word and for the Lord, amen. Matthew chapter 13, and let's look at verse uh, 13 tonight. Therefore, Jesus says, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see. You see that? He said, seeing they don't see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. He says, and in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. And the hearts, he says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing. Now I know there's nobody like that here that goes to word of life. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder if my preaching, the word of God, does any good whatsoever. But you know what? I can preach and preach and preach until I turn blue in the face. But I, it actually, it comes down to this. The Holy Ghost has to deal with their heart. The Holy Ghost has to convict them. And he does. Let me tell you, God gives us the opportunity. God wants us to be hungry for the Lord. And their eyes, they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and, and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Praise God. Look at verse 17. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. I want to talk about an appetite for God. Heavenly Father, I just pray thanking you for this time together tonight. The body of Christ coming and gathering according to the word of God. This is biblical to have worship service. Father, I pray your blessing, your touch, your anointing, your help, your strength. Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. Open our hearts, I pray, just to be hungry for the truths of the word of God. Thank you, Father. We praise. We love you. We worship you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. An appetite for the Lord. And I believe that this uh, very powerful passage that deals with the condition and the attitude of our heart. Now, God, let me tell you this. God cares about you. God cares about your heart. God is concerned about our spiritual condition. He's concerned about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. God is interested in us being interested in him. And God desires for us to have a heart after him. You know, we've talked about David on Wednesday nights. So we've studied about the life of David. David made a lot of mistakes. We know he wasn't perfect. We know he was the king of Israel. He's a great king. But we also know that David made lots of mistakes and he sinned against God and he stepped outside the will of God and he did things he shouldn't have done. But the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. You know, David loved God. We see in the Psalms the heart of God as David prophetically even uh, wrote and ministered and sang unto the Lord and worshiped God. David was one that had a heart after God. He had an appetite for the Lord. We see in Psalm 42 that the psalmist had wrote that he prayed that, you know, he desired God as the deer desires the water brooks and he, that's his heart for God. I'm hungry for God. I, I want the Lord. See, what happens is the devil wants to drown out your spiritual appetite for God. If the devil can just keep you busy, if the devil can keep you occupied, if the devil can think, keep your mind thinking about other things, then he can drown out uh, the appetite that you had for God. Remember when you got first saved, when you first got saved? Remember how on fire you were for the Lord? Why don't we have that fire today? The fire that we had for God, the passion that we had for God, we wouldn't miss a service. We were saved. 
saved. We're born again. We're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And now Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. And we have an appetite for the spiritual things of God. And God opened up the heavens for you because you were hungry for the Lord. All has to do with your desire and your heart and your faith, my friend. If you want to see God, he will reveal himself to you. He will. God, God will reveal himself. He'll open up the heavens for you to understand the spiritual realities of God. He will show up in your life. He will speak to you like we talked about this morning. He will lead you and guide you by his Holy Spirit. This isn't a dead religious thing that we're doing here. This is a living relationship with the living God. I don't know if you've noticed, but he's not in the grave. He's risen. Glory to God. He's alive. And now he lives inside of you. If I were you, I would take a little bit of time this week, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Read Ephesians chapter 2 and chapter 3 and see what God has done in your life. How God has brought you out of darkness and God has brought you into a right relationship with him and we're justified by faith. We were cut off from God but now we're brought into right relationship justified by faith through the Lord Jesus Christ because of the blood of his cross. Think about what God has done but remember when you were so hungry for the Lord and God began to reveal and to show great things for you. Let me just say this. Those that are hungry for God, those that are thirsty for God, those that are spiritual and those who have an appetite for God will see the activity of God in their lives and around them. The key word is appetite. Can you say the word appetite? Amen. That's right. Appetite. Spiritual cravings, if you will. Uh, spiritual hunger pains for God, for the Lord, for the spiritual realities of God, and for the word of the Lord. This whole Bible's falling apart. I can't, I can't part from this, folks. And I have to be careful with it. If I preach with it, I have to be careful because the pages are getting very thin in it now and they're getting worn out and they tear real easy and uh, uh, even even outside I brought it out the back deck and I was the wind took it and flipped it back open and you can see I've even got duct tape on it again trying to hold it together and there's all kinds of scotch tape and things like that but I love the word of God I love the Bible don't you love the Bible don't you love the word of the Lord and God will reveal so many things to you and it's exciting and it's it's just wonderful when God speaks to your heart and God shows you something out of the Bible and you know no, it leaps up off the, out of the pages into your heart, and you know that that is God speaking to you. It tells you you're not alone. It tells you God knows exactly what you're going through. God knows what you're thinking, and God has a special word for you for the moment, for the time, for your trial, for your situation, or the decisions that you need to make. That's the leadership of the Holy Spirit, praise God. That comes to people that are hungry for God, and they're seeking the face of the Lord, but not to those that do not. Amen. Think about this. I know that God's going to speak to us tonight. God's going to speak a word to you tonight. Amen. So we never know some of the things that we miss because we were not faithful unto the Lord. Come on, help me out tonight. Amen. Listen, God wants, God wants to share. God wants to reveal. And he wants us to have an appetite for him. But on the other hand, those that are not thirsty and those that are not hungry and those that don't have an appetite for God, they won't see the activity of God in their lives. And God will be there, but they'll miss God. I don't know. I'm sure we've all missed God somehow. And some, I know I've missed God at different times in my life. I don't want to miss God. I feel bad if I do. But even though Jesus is Lord and even though he's the son of God who came from heaven to this earth and although there were uh, uh, there, there were miracles upon miracles uh, that he made and performed and although there, were, as a, there was validated proof that he is the Messiah there were still those that did not see him they didn't see him because they did not want to believe that Jesus was the Messiah the son of God listen to me they saw him in bodily form raise the dead heal the sick deliver those that were demon possessed and yet they still did not believe and yet if they knew their Bible and they read the book of Isaiah and they knew the book of Isaiah they would know that it was prophecy being fulfilled that Jesus is the son of God hallelujah but they didn't want to believe and so therefore they did not see and it's no different today there are people that don't want to believe so therefore they don't see what God is doing and the activity of God and sometimes we miss the Lord because we're not looking for him amen Praise God. My wife says I am the worst when it comes to trying to find things. I mean, I'll be looking in the refrigerator trying to find certain things. You know, where's, where's the cheese or where's the, where's the ketchup or where's the mustard? I can't find on the where it's at. She opens, listen to this, this ain't right, Jeffrey. She opens up the refrigerator and there it is right there. And she pulls it out and says, here. And she's almost like mad at me. It's almost like, can't you see? I don't know. I was looking for it, but I didn't see it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? 
Hallelujah. Am I in trouble now? I'm in trouble now. I always get in trouble. Amen. Oh, thank you. Listen to me. I, I got a doghouse this year that has air conditioner. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be all right. But you know what? I'm like trying to find it and I can't see it, you know. But you know, there are people that aren't even looking for Jesus. They're not looking for God and they won't see him. They won't see the activity of God in their life. They miss God. God stood right there uh, before their eyes and they missed it. Why? Because they're not looking for him by faith. It all has to do with the condition of our heart. Our heart. That's right. You can come to church on a Sunday night or Sunday morning and still miss God because we can come out of duty, out of religious duty, out of religious habit. It's a good habit to be in to come to church, but it's a better habit if you come expecting to see the glory of God. Come expecting to hear a word from the Lord. It'll transform your life. Every time I went to church, I was on the edge of my seat believing that God had a word for me from that pastor or evangelist or whoever is going to preach, whether it be Sunday morning or Sunday night. Even at the old Baptist church I went to, the, only, the wonderful folks that kicked me out did matter. I believe that God had a word for me once I got saved. I was on the edge of my seat. I'm believing the Lord. God has a word for you in your life and in your situation that will speak to your heart. Friends, sometimes we miss God because we're not looking for him. Sometimes we miss him because our hearts are not in the right condition. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, our hearts can be in a wrong condition. Mm -hmm. I remember a time at JSM I got mad. Uh, uh huh. I I know y'all never get mad. You look at me like you, you know. Don't act mad like y'all are angels. I know better than that. Sometimes you get mad. You, sometimes you might get mad at me. And that's right. Sometimes you might get mad at me. I don't know why you get mad at me. I'd never make anybody mad. <laughs> but anyway, you know there was a situation going on there, and uh, my wife and I didn't believe that uh, Brother Jimmy Swaggart and Sister Francis had treated uh, some of our friends properly. Uh, they were working there at the ministry, and uh, and so I, I got mad. Boy, I was mad. I was hot under the collar. I, I just, I, you know, I just uh, frustrated and aggravated. They treat our friends like they did. It wasn't very nice, and uh, and so. Uh, what they did is they fired a friend of ours that was working there. And he's devoted and dedicated to that ministry for years and years and years. And then they fired him. And I just didn't think they did right, you know. And uh, and I, I think later they kind of regretted that. And I think they made things right. But nevertheless, I went in that Sunday morning service. Abby, this is what I did. I went in that Sunday morning service. And everybody, they're, I mean, they're praising God and they're worshiping the Lord. And everybody's, you know, shouting unto the Lord, this is me. And I did it on purpose. I, Sister Mona had a bad attitude. My heart, I was mad. Do you, you remember that, honey? Everybody, everybody's just jumping up, praising God, clapping, standing up. This is me. I'm just sitting there. Just like the whole service, the whole thing. In fact, it was so noticeable that, that one of uh, the teachers, one of the pastors that were there came up to me after the service, asked me if everything's okay. I said, sure, everything's okay. Why you ask? Uh huh. You know what I'm talking about? You know what? I'm going to tell you, I can't even tell you what songs they sing, and I do know not what they preach. I didn't receive a thing from the Lord. You know why? Because my heart was wrong. I had a bad attitude. I know none of you sanctified folks have that kind of problem, but I had a bad attitude. Amen. I didn't hear a, sometimes you can come in this house and have a bad attitude. You won't hear nothing Pastor Mark preaches. That's okay. Tell me when you have a bad attitude. I'll preach that same message next week so you get something out of it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know what happens. I, listen, I realize that. I know we're not perfect. I know sometimes, you know, uh, it's only on Sunday, you and your husband or your wife get in a fight. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? It's like everything's great all week long, and now on Sunday morning, well, what is that? That's the devil trying to keep you from receiving the word of God. Amen. That things go wrong on Sunday. Get a flat tire on Sunday. The refrigerator breaks down on Sunday. Things happen on Sunday. Always on Sunday. You know there's Monday through Saturday, but the devil don't mess with you on Monday through Saturday. He messes with you on Sunday because he doesn't want you to go to the house of God, worship of God, praising God, and he doesn't want you to receive a word from the Lord that God can speak to you and change your heart and your life and your situation. No, he doesn't want that. So he fights against it. So we do have spiritual conflict and spiritual warfare against life, the life of Christ. But sometimes we miss the Lord because our hearts are not in the right condition. Sometimes we miss God because of doubt and unbelief. That's a major thing right now. Even at Word of Life, wonderful people like you, you're wonderful people, you're amazing people, you're, you're fantastic. But you know what? Sometimes we don't come expecting to come believing God. That's doubt and unbelief. Sometimes we miss God because our eyes are looking someplace else. Sometimes we miss God because we didn't want to see him. Or we're in church but we're not expecting to see him. We're not believing to see him. I've seen God show up on a Wednesday night. I've seen God show up on a Sunday morning. I've seen God where he didn't show up on Sunday morning, but he showed up on Sunday night. I, you just never know what God might do, but come expecting God every single time, and you won't be disappointed. Don't look to me. I'm not God. You look to the Lord, and God will not disappoint you. 
All right, have you ever missed a spectacular event or something amazing because you weren't looking? Because you weren't looking, I mean, you were there, but your eyes were on something else. You glanced at something else, and you missed one of the most amazing shots in basketball. I did that with Michael and with Matthew, and sometimes, you know, I'd be on my phone, and I missed a good shot, or I missed a good block. I remember Matthew. I don't know. He was, I wish he was here tonight, but since he isn't, I'm going to try my best to embarrass him, but no. He was just a little boy. I don't know what grade he was in. Honey, do you remember? I think he might have been 12 years old, something like that. I, 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 I whatever, the, I, I wasn't able to go to the game. It was an away game and I wasn't able to go to it and so there's only a few seconds left on the clock sister Jan do you remember this there's only a few seconds left on the clock before it was halftime or something like this or before the end of one of the periods or the quarters and so he got the rebound of the ball and he's on the other end of the court and he's bouncing it he's just a little guy right half court I mean a little over even over half court distance and he throws the ball it's in the air the clock is ticking three two and then the ball goes through a swoosh and the buzzer goes off and the people go crazy and I wasn't there to see it now but I did get to see that somebody videoed it and I was able to see the video but how many know it's not quite the same like being there you can watch this service on church but it's not quite like the same as being there and being in the presence of God and and having the spirit of the Lord amongst the people in the body of Christ amen hallelujah oh there's a difference my friend sometimes you might have missed amazing plays in football or baseball all because my eyes were on something else it, it, it was just for a split second but I missed it sometimes we can miss God you know we can miss his presence we can miss the truths uh, because uh, uh, just for that split second we had our minds on something else other than God we miss we and we can miss but God uh, what God is doing all around because we're not because we're looking the wrong way we're, we're looking down instead of looking up we're not believing the Lord Israel had every opportunity but they missed it they messed up God wanted to do amazing things with his people but rather than believe God by faith they murmured you know the story here when they were in the wilderness they they, they complained and they didn't believe God God. Amen. That, that can happen to us too. And because of unbelief, they wandered in the wilderness all those, all those years and those 20 years and older until they died out. And then God rose up a younger generation who would obey his voice and they would cross that Jordan River. And that new generation was the one that experienced the power of God and the Jericho walls come tumbling down and they experienced victory over their enemies and they take possession of the promised land that God had for them. Praise God. Don't quit. Still keep believing the Lord and he'll bless and help you. Numbers 32 and 11 says this numbers 32 and 11 surely none of the men who came up from Egypt from 20 years old and above shall see the land of which I swore to Abraham Isaac and Jacob because what they have not wholly followed me they rebelled against God in fact the book of Hebrews it says they rebelled against the Lord they did not believe in fact they didn't believe in fact they didn't uh, the gospel that was preached to them didn't help them because it was not mixed with faith because of doubt and because of unbelief folks they missed it we we might consider them as the Old Testament church. They were God's chosen people, but they missed the blessings of God. They missed the, I don't want to miss the promised land. I don't want to miss the blessings of God. They missed the opportunity for God to do great things in their lives. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't miss God. If you want God to, you want to be re re refilled, don't miss God. Come believing, come expecting for the Lord to minister and to touch you all because they were looking the wrong direction. They didn't see it. Perhaps they didn't want to see it. Maybe they refused to see it, but because of the disposition of of their hearts and which was reflected by the direction of their eyes, they missed many blessings from God. What about the church of the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter, chapter 3? They also were not uh, looking for Jesus. Where was he? They, 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 they have an all great time inside, but let me tell you, it was all carnality. It was all carnality. There was no spirituality whatsoever in that church. How do you know that? Because everything that was spiritual was outside the church, on outside knocking on the door, desiring to come in. But Jesus said they didn't see, and he said this, they're looking the wrong direction. What are they doing? They're looking at themselves. It's all about them, but not about God. They're wretched, poor, blind, and naked spiritually. Jesus said this, anoint your eyes with eyes that you may see. Amen. We need to anoint our eyes spiritually with Isaac, the eyes of our heart, that we might see the Lord, that we might see his glory, that we might see the spiritual truths that God wants to speak to us through his word. Amen. All right. Praise God. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I love you. 
Praise the Lord. I know you love me. Hey, man, it'll be okay. Now, when you become a Christian, God gave you spiritual sight and hearing so that you can begin to experience the presence and activity of God in your life. Before I was saved, I couldn't see spiritual truths. Could you? Could you understand spiritual truths before you got saved? I couldn't see them. I couldn't hear them. I couldn't understand them. I was church. I was religious, but I didn't know God. I wasn't born again. I gave those, those Catholic nuns all kinds of trouble in catechism. I, I knew what it was to be in church. I was bored to death. I didn't understand a thing. I, I wasn't born again. I wasn't alive spiritually. I, you can go to church but not be born again. So before I was saved, I couldn't see spiritual truths, understand them. Jesus said, unless, he says this, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't see the kingdom of God unless one is born again. I think that's John chapter 3. Amen. He can't see it. You, uh, you can't understand it. Uh, you can't comprehend it. He can't uh, grasp it. Uh, it makes no sense to him because why? The lost mind or the carnal mind or the unregenerate mind or the soul cannot understand or grasp spiritual realities or spiritual truths. They just don't make sense to them, okay? You try to talk to them about the Bible, spiritual warfare, the end time events. They don't understand any of that unless it comes to the place of salvation. Then God will open up their understanding if their hearts are hungry to receive the truth about how a person can be saved or their sins forgiven. God will deal with you. But you cannot understand the word of God or the Bible unless you're saved and when you're saved then you are spiritually minded and able to discern what is God and what is not God okay all right but when I got saved, the moment I asked Christ into my heart, I began. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things become new. God now dwells in my heart. He opened up the heavens to me. He opened up my understanding. I began to see things I never saw before. Everything was new now. I understood why God created me. I understood my purpose in life, and that's to glorify God. The purpose of your life is to bring glory and honor unto God, to glorify the Lord. I understood why the birds chirped and why the stars were in the sky, to bring glory to God. God created created all things the Bible says. The universe is amazing. Tell me where the beginning of the universe is. Tell me where the end of the universe is. It's just incredible. Do you know that there are more galaxies than just the Milky Way galaxy? You know that? We're in the Milky Way galaxy. It's amazing. Do you know that it takes, when you see the, the, the light from the sun, that light is already eight minutes old. Did you know that? It's already eight minutes old. The light that you see right now, that's eight minutes old. It takes eight minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. The light from the Big Dipper takes 45 years to travel from the Big Dipper to the earth. That's a long time. And, and we're just a speck in a galaxy. And if you would look and see the totality, we don't know where the end of it is, but yet God created it. The Bible said that, that the earth is God's footstool. It's amazing. But yet God dwells inside of our hearts. He lives inside of us as just incredible but God created all these things and it brings glory to God how could you see the vastness of all this and say that there isn't a divine creator or a divine designer or a divine architect there's no way all this just got here by mistake and yet they say in evolution that somehow everything that we see now and all the matter and all the earth and all the universe and all the galaxies spun real small into a size of a dot or a period on your page and then exploded and expanded and there we have what we have today. No, my friend, that is not true. Why don't we just believe what the word of God says? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was made by God. And the Bible said that God holds all things together by the word of his power. He is our God and our creator and the designer of all things. He is Lord and God has created all this and it brings glory to the Lord. How can you look at the vastness of the universe and all that's created and not believe that there is a God? How could you be a doctor, a surgeon? Do you know they still can't figure out everything about us? They don't know everything there is about the body. They don't know everything there is about the brain. It's incredible. They're still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure out people too. But it's true. It's amazing. Let's, let's take a minute here and just reflect on this. God is the creator. God, and of all the planets and of all the galaxies, and the, and the Milky Way, and if you back up enough off the Milky Way, the Milky Way looks like a dot. It's just a speck. It's just a little bitty light compared to the vastness of other universes. There's another universe they say, I forgot what they name it, but it's bigger than the Milky Way. It's bigger. But yet, but yet there's human life on this earth. Of all the planets, there's human life on this earth. Of all the planets, this is where Jesus came 
and dwelt among his people. Of all the planets, this is where Jesus came and died on the cross and gave his life and shed his blood for you and I, that we might have eternal life. And the Bible says when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back to all the other planets. He's coming back to earth. He's coming back for his people, for a church without spot or wrinkle that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is coming back to set the new Jerusalem, his kingdom here on this earth, and he'll reign for a thousand years. Amen. Hallelujah. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank God for his goodness. But once we become a new creation in Christ, the Holy Ghost helps us to understand the spiritual truths and to walk in God and to walk with the Lord. He will lead us. Spiritual sensitivity to God is a blessing that must be accepted and and put into effect in our lives. And and that's by faith. I believe this is why it's imperative that we receive the blessing of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you to pray and to seek God. Seek him in your car. Seek him at home. Seek him everywhere you go. And to cry out to God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Maybe he'll baptize you in your car. Maybe he'll do it at home. Maybe he'll do it in the woods. Maybe he'll do it at church. I don't know. But if you will seek God now everywhere at all times and you'll cry out to the Lord, I know that God will be faithful to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I remember when we started the church at Word of Life and now we're at the CWA building on Bell Fountain Avenue. And man, I'd pray for people a lot of times to receive the Holy Ghost. And I remember one particular Sunday night, there was just a handful of us. I don't know, maybe 12 of us, something like that. And uh, I called them all up front. I didn't know what I was doing. I just called them all up front. We're going to pray for the Holy Ghost. And so I said, lift your hands. And I asked some people that were behind them. I said, now, I said, when I tell you, I said, lay your hands on them and let's pray and believe God for the Holy Ghost. And so we're praying and we're believing God and they're raising their hands. Some of them got tears coming down their cheeks and they're crying out to the Lord. Man, I tell you, they're just crying out to God. I don't think we had any music. I don't, anything like that at the time. We're just, we're just crying out to God. And uh, after some time, all of a sudden, that one got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then that one got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that one got baptized all in one minute. Boom, boom, boom. The Holy Ghost fell. The the Bible talks about the Holy Ghost falling. The Holy Ghost fell upon them. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what we want, church. I want the Holy Ghost to fall upon us. I don't want to say that we're Pentecostal in name only. I want to be Pentecostal in experience. I want the Holy Ghost to fall upon the church again. Fall upon word of life. Fall upon you. And it's a blessing. And God has that gift for you. And God wants to empower you. And God wants to strengthen you and help you in your walk with the Lord. You need the Holy Ghost. So cry out to him. Not just here, but at all times. And maybe when you come here, maybe before you get here, all of a sudden God will pour out his spirit upon you. Boom, there you go. Hallelujah. I was praying for God, the Holy Ghost. I was praying for the Lord to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Once I realized there's a lot of confusion in that because people are telling me it's of the devil and all that kind of thing. But once I found out, no, it's not. It's up to date. According to the word of God, and I was praying all the time for God to fill me with the Holy Ghost. But it was that Sunday morning at JSM when I went down to the altar, that octagon, back then praying for healing over a situation, praying for healing. God would, God would heal me. God would set me free. And it was there at that time that I heard the certain sound of a mighty rushing wind, and God poured out the Holy Ghost. Of all times, that was the time I wasn't even asking for the Holy Ghost. I wasn't praying for the Holy Ghost. I was praying for healing. I lifted my hands. All of a sudden, I heard a sound, and God poured out the Holy Ghost. I began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. It was just like it was, I believe, in the book of Acts. The Divided, if you could see in the spiritual, divided tongues as a fire sat upon me. And I'm just telling you, if you'll hunger for God, if you'll thirst for God, if you'll have an appetite for God, God will not disappoint you. And you'll be surprised all of a sudden God will show up. Maybe you're not even praying for the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost falls on you. You begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, not to embarrass anybody here tonight. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I just want to ask you this. If you, if you say, well, Pastor, I'm one of those that want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, raise your hand so I can pray for you. Just raise your hand so I can pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else want the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Anybody else? Everybody baptized in the Holy Ghost here tonight? Because if you're not, I just want to pray for you. All right, pray. I just want to pray for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? I just want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask God to touch you, to fill you with the Holy Ghost of God. Just, yeah, that's right. And I, I believe in God. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Just lift your hand. Say, Pastor Mark, pray for me. Pray for, thank you. Okay, there's four. Anybody else? Anybody else tonight? Five, all right, all right, five. Anybody else? Pray, pray for you. I'll pray for you. Six, all right, six. All right, we got seven, we got seven. Anybody got eight? Anybody got eight? Anybody got eight? Hallelujah. It's taking a little time to get there. We got seven, got seven, got eight, got eight, eight. Anybody got nine, nine? Anybody got nine? Amen, hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. I'm gonna pray for you. Believe God for you. All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You pray, and I'll pray with you, all right? Amen. You'll never know. You just come up here. You'll find out what happens, God. God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. God will empower you, amen? Praise God. All right. 
All right, now there's some people, uh, uh, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost gives you a greater sensitivity to God and his presence. It makes Jesus more real. It gives us the ability to discern what's God and what isn't God. There's, there's a reason God wants us to receive this gift, not only to empower us, but also to enable us. It helps us to see. It helps us to see what others cannot see and to perceive what others cannot perceive. There were those in the Bible that saw because they wanted to see. They believed by faith. What about John saw Jesus while on the island of Patmos and he fell as a dead man? What about Daniel when he saw Jesus as God gave him visions of the coming kingdom. What about Ezekiel? Saw the glory and the holiness of God and Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Glory to God. What about Elisha? Oh yeah, you know the story of Elisha. Amen. He was, he saw what others could not see and when the enemy surrounded him, his servant Gehazi got a little bit nervous, and, but not Elisha. He knew God was with him and his servant saw the enemy, but Elisha saw the army of God surrounding them. I want you to notice, look at Elisha, it says 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. I can't wait till Wednesday night when we get into 2 Kings and 1 Kings. It's going to be a great study, amen? But Elisha said, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those that are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see that's his servant and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man that's Gehazi and he said and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha now what happened here is God opened his eyes and then he saw but when we see that part where it said the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha it was there the whole time Elisha saw that the servant didn't see it but they were there the entire time Elisha who had a spiritual mind a spiritual heart an appetite for God saw when to the heavenlies and can see in the spirit, in the spiritual, what was really there, but Gehazi couldn't see it. I wonder how many of us are not seeing what is really here. Maybe there are angels around and camped around us right now. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe a lot of people are not seeing what others see. The scripture indicates that those who are who are not spiritual cannot see or comprehend spiritual things. Matthew chapter 13, verse 14. Matthew 13 and 14. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Hearing you'll hear but not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. That was me at one time. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Dull. Their, their ears are hard of hearing. And their, their, their eyes have, have closed. They, they, they don't hear. They're dull. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. You, you want God to touch you? You want God to heal you? you? You need a miracle in your life? I pray that your hearts not be dull. M Michael just tonight was trying to open up the, the salt bag downstairs, a brand new bag, and trying to pour salt in the bucket. And so he had something in his, in his hand. I thought it was a knife, and he poked it in the bag, and he was trying to, to open that bag. And I said, man, I said, is your knife that dull? And I realized it was a screwdriver. He's trying to pull it open. You know, you can do that when you're a Marine. <laughs> you just point and get up. Use whatever you want. But I'm just saying, sometimes our knives can be pretty dull to where they don't function properly. And we miss out on the word of God and on the spiritual realities of the Lord. We miss out on the blessing of God because uh, our hearts can become dull. That's right. God wants to work in, in, the, in lives and do miracles and bless. But, because, but he couldn't. Uh, Jesus went to his hometown and couldn't do many miracles because of the hardness of the people's hearts they did not believe God looks I don't want to come like I don't want to be like that at word of life I want us to believe God for the unbelievable why not why not give it all to God he's a big God he's a great God he's a huge God amen praise the Lord and there's nothing God cannot do without spiritual eyes we can be right in the midst of a mighty move of God and not see it I mean, people are getting happy and blessed and shouting and running and praising God and we're just looking around not even interested do you know how many times I've seen people right at the altar call get up and leave? Right at the altar call. Why do you leave now? It's a habit. Every time at the altar call. Why do you? In other words, you've already made up in your mind before service even started, you're not coming to the altar. That's what you said. You've already made up in your mind that you've got to go and you've got to leave at a certain time. If pastor runs a little over, I've got to leave early. You've already made up in your mind. You've already shut your heart out. You, you, in other words, what I'm saying is you're exactly what Jesus is talking about. Your hearts have grown dull. And you don't know how, how bad that hurts a pastor when he's putting everything he has and he's put hours and hours and hours into a message 
and he's trying to help people. But you know what? They're really, they're not turning away from the pastor. They're turning away from God. They're turning away from Jesus. But you know what? They did the same thing to Jesus in the New Testament. Did you know that? That they turned away and walked with him no more, the Bible says. His disciples turned away from him. People turned away from him. That's right. When, when Jesus, when he began to speak and the sayings were too hard, they said, we can't take this. We're out of here. We're not, talk, we're not carrying no cross. We're not doing this. We're not going to be crucified for you. We're not going to take any kind of persecution because of you. And so they turned away and followed him no more. In other words, they've made up in their mind, Jesus, you either give me what, my, what I want or I'm leaving you. And we have the same mentality here today. The same thing happens to here today. If you go too long, I've got things to do or whatever. I've already made up in my mind. I'm leaving at a certain time. I've made up in my mind. I'm not coming. I've made up in my mind. I'm not going to go to the altar and pray. I've already made up in my mind. I'm not going to budge. You are in danger of hell fire. I'm going to tell you very clearly and with love, you are in danger of hell. Because I don't know how a born-again Christian can think that way. You might every once in a while, but it can't be a common thing in your life. You can get mad at the preacher if you want. Get mad. Throw knives at me. Curse me to my face or behind me. It doesn't matter. The fact is, I must tell the truth. I must tell what the Bible says, but I have known people through the years, and I see that people have habits, and they've already made up in their mind. They're not coming back on Sunday night regardless. They're not going to go to the altar regardless. Why not? Why not? Why not come back? Why not be led to the Spirit of God? Maybe God has something for you. Maybe God wants to feed with the Holy Ghost. Maybe God wants to renew and strengthen you and revive you. There's no, listen, there is no strength like the strength of God. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There are times I've only gotten two or three hours of sleep, but God strengthened me and sustained me as if I had a full night of sleep the next day the power of almighty God all because I was hungry for the Lord I would stay up and pray and worship the Lord I remember many times laying in my bed and I would lift up my hands unto God and just praise God and worship God just because I'm hungry for the Lord you don't have any time problem spending an hour and a half at El Campesinos you don't it all has to do with the condition of our heart. We have no problem spending an hour and a half. We, we'll, we'll, we'll drive an hour to go to uh, 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 Belleville. Uh, Bel not Bellevue. I said Belleville. And we'll go to that Der Dutchman over there. We'll take an hour and we'll drive over there. And we'll wait 30 minutes in line for them to wait on us. And then we'll take another hour to eat. That's two and a half hours. No problem. But when it comes to the word of God, all of a sudden, we don't have time. Church, I'm preaching tonight. You know exactly what I'm telling you. It all has to do with the condition of the heart. Okay? I'm going to hurry up here. I'll hurry. Without spiritual eyes, we can be right in the middle of a move of God and not recognize that God can speak through his word. The person next to you might sense the presence of God. The glory of the Lord may fill this place. But we miss it. We miss it because we're not looking for it. We miss it because we're not expecting it. We miss it because we don't have spiritual eyes and a heart condition to receive. Think of those who miss Jesus. He stood right before them. Miracles after miracles. People were healed, delivered, set free. Lepers cleansed. The, some of the dead were raised to life and they refused to see it. They missed it. They missed God working in their lives and there was no change in them. They walked away from God. Now, there's a radical difference between Seeing your surroundings from a human perspective and seeing life through spiritual eyes. Now, non-believers will see world events around them. They'll see what's going on around them, and they, they will see what's going on. In fact, some of them will become quite confused. They don't understand why things are happening the way they are. But we will look at the same events, and we'll recognize the activity of God in this. In other words, the prophecy is being fulfilled, and we'll know that we're coming to the end times, and these are the last days, and the seven-year tribulation. I preached 22 messages on the end-time events, and it has not changed us it hasn't changed a thing has it we don't believe the bible we don't believe the book of revelations we don't believe the book of daniel it hasn't changed a thing we go on just like jesus said in the days of noah they were married and given in marriage eating and drinking going about our daily lives but nothing has changed after 22 messages that's that's about 22 hours of preaching on the book of Revelation. Do you understand what I'm saying here tonight? Listen, I, 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 if your life doesn't line up with the word of God, then your testimony is against you. 
your lifestyle is against you. you. You testify against yourself because you're not lining your life up with the word of God. Folks, the prophecies are being fulfilled. This ought to startle us. This ought to shake us. We need to adjust our lives to Christ. When we meet a person who is seeking God because our spiritual lives are open, we will recognize the convicting work of the Holy Spirit in that person's life. You can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 as a reference. Brother John, you can put that on the screen there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 is a reference there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Of the temporary things of life compared to eternal things of life. The temporary things are passing away, but the, the things which are eternal are forever. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Look at the screen there. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. Amen. What about the time when Jesus stopped at the well? The disciples were hungry, so they went down to Burger King to get something to eat for lunch, but not Jesus. He stayed at the well. Jacob's well, in fact, it was in John chapper 4. And there was a Samaritan woman who came to draw water, and she had been married for five times, and she was living with another man. And immediately, there was the activity of God. Now listen, her life is a wreck. Her life was a mess. She was empty. She was searching. She was seeking, but could not find. And God was drawing herself, her to himself. And at this moment, the food can wait. Do you understand? God is working. Lunch can wait. We'll eat another time. God's doing something now. Most would have missed it. They would have noticed, especially the church of today. But Jesus takes notice. He sees what others cannot see. He perceives what others cannot perceive. Jesus is in tune to the Holy Spirit. He has the fullness of the Holy Ghost without measure. And before it's over, a woman who was living in sin, a woman who was empty on the inside, a woman who was searching for answers is saved. And she began to tell everybody else about Jesus and what he had done. Listen, but in the meantime, the disciples come back to Jesus and said, Rabbi, eat. But Jesus replied by saying this, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Okay, wait a minute. Guess what? They didn't see it. What am I saying? I'm saying these are disciples that walk with Jesus, but they missed it. God was at work, but all they cared about was lunch. It's like the church when the pastor preaches too long. Huh? All right. The last 15 of the minutes of the message, you didn't hear a word. The last 15 minutes, you didn't hear nothing because he went past 12 o'clock. Well, I don't know. Your God doesn't move past 12 o'clock. My God does. The Baptist God doesn't work past 12 o'clock. I'm going to be honest with you. But my God does. My God's not limited by time, but we limit God by our time. You understand what I'm saying? And, and so God, God was at work, and, and all they cared about was their lunch. They didn't see it. I'm trying to, that's the church today. The disciples are a type of the church today. That's what happened. They're thinking carnally. And the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And so they're trying to figure this whole thing out. But they're looking at this in the natural rather than the spiritual, the supernatural. And Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Jesus said, that's what I came for. And disciples were living according to the natural instincts instead of the spiritual instincts. They did not see spiritually. They're being led by their stomach, by their hunger pains, by their flesh. Paul said something about their belly being their God, or their God is their belly. You have those who will see God doing some, something in someone's life and act upon it, but then there are those without spiritual perception who will encounter, they will encounter that same person and not grasp the eternal significance of what's happening in that person's life. It all has to do with the eyes and the desire of the heart. Your eyes are, are, are connected to your heart. And I was pondering the other day and thinking about this. Jesus said, now listen to this. Jesus said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Ah, oh, I can hear today that church is a cult. Jesus says, if, you're, if your hand offends you, cut it off. Cut it off. Now, people say, no, no, no. What he's talking about is spiritual things, and you just can't do that. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, what Jesus is doing, he says, your soul is so important. Heaven and hell are real, and your soul is so important. It would be better for you to go into heaven without one eye or without one arm than you end up in hell with your eye and your arm. If you can't quit lusting, pluck it out. Get rid of it. You don't need it. Is that, is that what you want and it's going to send you to hell? Oh, that, that's, that's some weird preaching, Pastor. I think Jesus meant exactly what he said. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. If, if, you, if your hand offends you, cut it off. 
Now, I know he wasn't teaching on self-mutilation, but he's talking about that your soul is so important that you need to take drastic measures if you can't get victory over whatever that is that's going to drag your soul to hell. See, Jesus, he, he thought that this gospel was so important. That's right. He thought that the heaven and hell was so important. He thought the cross was so important. He thought that uh, shedding his blood was so important. But he said, if these things offend you, you need to get rid of them. I don't know. I think it was on the movie Fireproof, and uh, he was having a pornography problem, and he was married. It was Kirk Cameron that played the part, and uh, he just couldn't get victory over this. It was destroying his life, destroying his marriage, destroying his relationship with the Lord, and he couldn't get victory over this. And finally, I don't know, I, I don't, there's one scene where he finally just takes his computer, and he yanks it and pulls it off the wall, takes it out, outside, puts it in the trash can, takes his baseball bat, and he's just whacking and whacking and destroying. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. And the neighbor's looking at him like he's gone crazy. No, uh, what do you say? Kirk Cameron said, I've had enough. In other words, my eyes offended me. I've got to pluck it out. My hands offended me. I got to cut it off. In other words, I got to get rid of it. I got to get rid of it. All right. Okay. All right. Got to get rid of it. All right. Where are we at church? All right. All right. So, 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 so sin. Okay. I, I'm almost done. Sin dulls our spiritual senses. Look at, look at Hebrews 12 and one. Brother John, can you pull that up? Hebrews 12 and one. Sin will ultimately leave us spiritually blind and deaf. Sin will. If we don't deal with the sin, look at here in Hebrews 12 and one. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about or surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, and I believe those are the people who have gone on before us that are great witnesses of faith and testimony of faith, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us. That means holds us back, okay? And let us run the race with patience, the race that it, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And so sin can hold you back. Sin can hinder us, okay? Sin will ultimately leave us spiritually blind and deaf. Therefore, we may not be content with merely seeing with our physical eyes. May we not be content with just hearing with our physical ears. But let us be sensitive to what God is doing in the spiritual. Amen? In the spiritual. Praise God. Another reference I want you to read is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. Hebrews 11, 5 through 14. It's another reference that you can read and look at there. Um, Jesus said, uh, he who has ears, let him hear. Look at this. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And God, no, that's not, that's not the scripture there, is it? No, that's not the scripture. What did I say? Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 5, 11, 5, 11. Go the other way around. 5, 11. Real quick there. Praise God. All right. There you go. Praise God. I love this. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, hard to be said, okay? Seeing ye are what? Dull of hearing. There are things, Paul said, look, there, there are Hebrews, who's the author of Hebrews, said there are things that, that need to be said, things I want to say, but I can't say them because you're dull of hearing. You won't listen to them. You don't have a spiritual mind, a spiritual heart to have these, to understand these things, okay? Amen? Go to the next verse, Brother John. The next verse says what? For when for the time you ought to be what? Teachers, you need that someone teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as I have need of milk and not of strong meat. In other words, you can't handle the meat. You should be teachers yourself. In other words, you should have grown in God by now and have understanding, being rooted and grounded in the Lord, that you should be at this point of time in your life, should be teachers to other people. But he's saying you got to be taught all over again the basics of Christianity. All right. All right. Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. He's not talking about natural ears. He's talking about spiritual ears, the ears of your heart. See, your eyes are connected to your heart. Your ears are connected to your heart. Did you know that? I don't know, the old song, the, I don't know, the hand bones connected to the, I don't know, it's all that kind of, but no, 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 no. The, the eyes are connected to the heart. In other words, what's in your heart or what your eyes are going to see, all right? What, what you, what, what's in your heart or what your ears are going to hear? It's what you want to hear, all right? Amen? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? So, so here, Jesus, it has to do with the conditioned attitude of the heart. May we ask the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to be sensitive to God and all that he is doing in our lives and around us. God, I want to see. I want to have a heart that's hungry for the Lord. Get you, get you an old, get you a Bible like this, and after years of study, that it's worn out, and you have to have it recovered, and you have to use duct tape trying to hold it together, and the pages are thinning out and wearing out. Get you, that's what I'm talking about. A Bible, a life that is a Bible that's about to fall apart is a life that's held together. 
You know that? It's, get a good Bible and study and ask God to speak to your heart. And the Lord will do so. Don't rush God. Don't push God. Don't, don't, don't shove God. But just wait upon the Lord and he'll speak to you. The blessed people are those who can see and those that can hear the spiritual things of God. It's those who can see and perceive spiritual truths. It's those who can hear and accept God's amazing word. These are the ones who are blessed in God's economy. May our eyes be open to God. May those who have ears hear what the Spirit of God is expressly saying in the days in which we're living in right now. Oh, my friend, we need to get serious about our relationship with the Lord. Ask him to open our spiritual eyes to the truths of God, to open our ears to hear his voice. Give us an appetite for him. Give us hunger pains. For the bread of life. That's what I want. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm done. Finished. Hallelujah. Good God's word good. Can we stand together and just thank him tonight? Can we stand together and just thank the Lord tonight? Just thank the Lord. I want you to get this, please. You're going to, maybe one day you're going to say, man, I, now I understand what Pastor Mark was saying. All that time he aggravated me. All those times, you know. And, and then you finally you get it. And, you, and the light bulb turns on. All of a sudden you get understanding. Heaven opens up and God pours into you. And, and now you're like, I get it. 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. This is what's needed. This is what's needed. God, give me hunger pains for you. Give me hunger pains for you. I want a spiritual craving. I want a spiritual craving. Listen, I, I don't know. Most people, I don't know how many times they eat a day. Three times a day? Two times a day? Four times a day? I, I got people here for, for one hour of preaching, one twenty-fourth of an hour on that day of the whole week on just Sunday morning. I, one twenty-fourth. And I've got to somehow deposit into them enough. I can't do it in one hour. I can't do it in one hour. You, you go, you, people will go, they'll go eat in, in the morning and they'll have breakfast and, and they'll have lunch at home and, and then at night they'll go out to eat again on one day, one day. I, I just ask you to come back on a Sunday night that I might feed you more. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't, you can't make her force me. I'm just telling you, I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I want my heart to be hungry for God. Folks, remember when you first got saved, how hungry you were for the Lord and you wouldn't miss a service and you were in the Word and you were in prayer and you were in worship. Remember that? What happened to those hunger pains? And I was thinking about this the other day about just about being a witness and reaching out to people. And I, re I re just remember this trying to talk to everybody I could about Jesus. And, and I was thinking, Lord, I, I, I think I've changed over the years. And I think some, somewhat has to do with people, you know, turn you away and turn, you don't want to hear it. And you only get the door, your door, the door slammed in your face so many times and you just kind of get tired of trying. But you know what? We got to keep on trying. We got to keep on reaching people. We got to do everything we can to try to reach them with the gospel of Christ. People need saving. Your family needs saving. You got children need saving. Grandchildren, great grandchildren, they need saving. They need the Lord. Pray for them. Don't give up. But of all things, let them see a craving in your heart for God, an appetite for the Lord an appetite for God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God gave us this beautiful night to have service. Thank you for coming to it. I pray God's blessing on you. If you're, I think there were eight people tonight that said they want to receive the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to spend time with the Lord. I want you to pray. I want you to seek the face of God. Throughout the week, I want you to cry out to the Lord. And I, I want you to come expecting God anytime, any given service. And you just come up here and say, Pastor, I want the Holy Ghost. And you just believe the Lord. And we'll, we'll, lay, we'll gather around you. We'll lay hands on you. We'll believe God for the Lord to touch you. I, I want us to, to come with an expectation. See, there are times I can feel whether we have the faith in this church to believe God for a miracle or not. And sometimes I don't have the altar calls because I know that we don't have the faith that's needed in this church. We don't have the measure of faith. Our faith has not risen to the level that it needs to, to believe God for the impossible. So I'm saying this, there are many times I know that God wanted to do something, but he couldn't do it because we were not believing him. Our hearts were dull. I don't care if you've been saved 50 years. Your hearts can be dull. 
I don't want my heart to be dull. Sharpen it. Amen. God, may we be willing tonight. Say, God, sharpen my heart. Sharpen my heart tonight. Would you, would you do that? Would you be willing, church? Sharpen, sharpen my heart, God. Sharpen my heart, Father. I pray in the name of the Lord. Father God, we come to you tonight in the body of Christ. I don't want my ears to be dull of hearing. I don't want my heart to be dull of hearing and receiving of the things of God. But God, I pray right now that there be a spiritual sharpening taking place right now. And I believe that happens when we repent of our sins, God. And we confess them before you in the name of the Lord. I pray that you will do something wonderful in our lives. I pray that you'll do something new. I pray that you'll do something mighty in each of our hearts, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that we be open, that we be hungry, that we have a spiritual appetite, that we be, that we, that we be willing, God. I pray in the name of the Lord. And I believe that we'll see revival, experience revival, and I believe lives will be changed. And I believe, God, that when we open ourselves up to you and, God, you do something mighty in us, I believe we'll see our family getting saved. Just like the jailer and his family, his household got saved when he got saved. Father, I believe that'll happen. I believe that'll happen in the body of Christ. If we will come expecting, believing, you prayed up, worshiped up, read, worded up, God, I believe, God, in the name of the Lord, that you'll do something great and wonderful and magnificent because you're an awesome God and there's nothing you cannot do. You're a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the Lord, I know that you want to move. I know that you do. So church right now, just open your heart up to God. Go ahead. Just open your heart up to the Lord in the name of Jesus. You begin to pray. You begin to cry out to the Lord where you are. You just open your heart up to God right now. Hallelujah. God, I don't want my heart to be hardened. Hallelujah. God, I pray the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Oh, God, forgive me, God. If I become dull of hearing, forgive me, God. I'm asking you to help me, God. I'm asking you to sharpen my heart in the name of Jesus. I pray the name of the Lord. I don't want to become so religious. I don't want to become so churchy that I miss God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, when Jesus passes by, I don't want to miss the Lord. I don't want to miss what God's going to do. I don't want to miss the Word. I don't want to miss the Holy Ghost. I don't want to miss the power of the Spirit. I don't want to miss the refilling. I don't want to miss the miracle. I don't want to miss the healing. I don't want to miss the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to miss revival. I don't want to miss it, God. I don't want to miss it. God, I want to be hungry. I want to be in tune with the Lord. I want to be hungry for God. Give us a spiritual appetite. Not just those that are here tonight, but all people, God, all people. Because, Lord, I really don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. But, God, I pray in the name of Jesus for every single person. I pray for them, God. Touch them, bless them, help them, strengthen them. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your heart up to the Lord. Ask God to help you. Ask God to pour out the Holy Ghost upon you. Ask God to pour the Holy Ghost on you. Ask God to fill you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to start making a difference. I want you that want the baptism. I want you to start coming to the altar without me prompting you. And I want you to pray. And I want you, I want to see a hunger in your heart. I want to see hunger pains in you. Hallelujah. You know, I know, I know you mamas. You'll go to the grocery store. You'll take two hours going to the grocery store. You'll spend two hours in the kitchen. If you know your, hung, your family is appreciative and you know your family is hungry, your children are hungry, you love cooking because they come and they, they appreciate the food and they eat it all up. And that just does something to you. That just makes you feel proud. You know, I would have to say that has to do something with God when we come as his children hungry to the banqueting table. When we come to God and say, God, I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for your presence. And I believe that that does something with God. And God just wants to pour out. And God just wants to pour out. And God just wants to pour out. And God just wants to pour out on you. Hallelujah. The more that you hunger for the Lord, God never runs out of supply. God never runs out. God has an abundant supply. And whenever we're hungry for the Lord, God just keeps pouring. He keeps pouring. He says, look at that sister. She's so hungry for the Lord. He just keeps pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Look at that brother. He's hungry. Pouring out, pouring out. You know what? I want to see our young people hungry for the Lord too. I want to see our young adults hungry for the Lord. I want to see them hungry for Jesus also. I want to see them at the altar seeking the face of God. I want to see them crying out to the Lord. I want to see a stirring in their hearts as well. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just love the Lord now. Just love the Lord tonight. Just thank you, Lord. I love you. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I praise you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, pastor, when will you start having altar calls? I'll tell you, when people start wanting them. Hallelujah. When people start wanting them again. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I praise you tonight. God, I worship you tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Touch my sister, Father, in the name of the Lord. Feed her heart, her soul. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Put those spiritual hunger pains in our heart, God. Oh, give us a spiritual appetite for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want to have a heart craving for God. I want my heart to crave for the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, put the appetite in our heart, God, I pray. The cravings in our heart for God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we're seeking the face of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, we cry out to you. In the name of the Lord, God, put it in us, God. Put it in us. Put it in us, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost. I want a miracle. I want the Lord. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Fill me, God, with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Fill me, Lord. Fill me, God. Fill me, God. In the name of Jesus, I want the Holy Ghost. Baptize my sister with the Holy Ghost. Speaking with other tongues. As the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, your touch, your power, your grace. Oh, we believe the Word of God. We stand on the promises of God. We cry out to a living God, not a dead God, not a dead Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you in this house. The Lord is in this place. The presence of God is in this house. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You worship him. I feel the presence of God. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in this place. I lie not. I exaggerate not. The Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, I know you can sense his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, I worship. I praise you. Oh, give us hunger pains. Give us a spiritual appetite, God. Hungry for 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 God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Touch us. Heal us. Help us. Our physician, our God. In the name of the Lord. We need a healing. We need a touch of God. We need the power of your spirit. We need the healer to show up. Hallelujah. Glory. Receive the healing of the Lord. 
as we touch by faith the hem of his garment. Receive the healing of the Lord tonight. In the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive the healing of God. I receive the healing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. 
Oh God, my Lord. God, my Lord. Jesus, loose your power. Loose your power. Loose your glory. Loose the Spirit of God in this place, God. Oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what will get you through tomorrow. This is what will get you through the next day. This is what will get you through the next week. This is what will help you. This is what will strengthen you. This is what's going to help you to think spiritually, to have an appetite for God, a spiritual mind for the Lord. This will give you wisdom. This will give you guidance. The Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what the church needs. We must come back to the presence and power of the Spirit. Presence and power of the Holy Ghost. I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, sing it. Sing it. Hallelujah. Jesus, every shackle, every bondage, every jail cell door, come off. Hallelujah. Loose it in the name of Jesus. Loose it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, my Lord, my God, my God, my God. Come, Holy Ghost. Oh God, loose the Holy Spirit. Loose the Holy Ghost. Loose the Holy Ghost. Oh God, let them fall right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, I open my heart to the Lord. I open my heart to Jesus. I open my heart to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus.
wonderful spirit of the Lord here tonight. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you folks watching us live can sense what we sense in this place, but it's a wonderful, sweet, sweet spirit here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Showing up and confirming his word. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. This is what's needed. People get too busy and think, I don't have time for this. You don't have time for him then because I tell you, it's wonderful spirit, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, so kind to us. Isn't he good to us? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together tonight. Just thank him. Just stand together. Thank him. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for the service tonight here. Thank you, Lord, for showing up. Thank you for the glory of your presence in this house, God, and touching your people, encouraging the hearts of your people. Now bless them, Lord, as we continue this week. Give them strength every day to live their lives for you. Empower them, Father, with the Holy Ghost. Those that are seeking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I pray that they'll just cry out to you all week long, every day. Cry out to you for the Holy Ghost. And I pray, God, that you'll do it. I know that you'll do it. I know that you'll do it. Lord, you might do it on their job. You might do it in the car. You might do it at their house. You might do it at church. It could be anywhere, God. Our hearts just hungry for the Lord. Bless them, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We simply give you glory, God. We love and bless you, Father. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for being our Lord and our God and for giving us the strength to live for you. Father, I pray for revival. I pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I pray for change. I pray, God, that you'll do this in our hearts. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, folks. Have a great night tonight. I know that you already have. Amen. I know that you already have. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. If you joined us live, thank you for joining us, being a part of our service tonight. And the Lord may richly bless you as well. Amen. See you Tuesday night at prayer, folks, at 7 o'clock. Tuesday night. Come on. Pray together. Get the fire.